Cisco CICD course overview and certification. I am so ready to kick this series off. 50 some nuggets later, it's done. This is the final nugget that I record with three motivations in mind. One is to prepare you for the content you're about to see and Cisco certification in general. Second is to give you the overview of how we teach at CBT Nuggets so that you can be prepared as you walk into this on what to expect. And then third, how you can best prepare yourself for the real world and deploying collaboration solutions or preparing for the certification exam. So let's talk certification to start off with. CCNA collaboration is very unique in the sense that Cisco departed from their normal path of certification. Normally you get the CCNT certification it's the ICD-1 course here at CBT Nuggets, and you take a whole bunch of other stuff, depending on what track you're going to, and you end up in another Cisco track, like CCNP routing and switching, or CCIE routing and switching, or CCNP security, or CCNP wireless, or blah, 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 blah. We could go down the, down the list. So we have to look very intentionally as to why did Cisco depart from requiring a CCNT and just require CICD and CIVND as the prerequisites. Here's why. They are building an entirely new engineer in the CCNA collaboration world, or in, you know, as you continue, CCNP and CCIE collaboration world, because you can now have an engineer that manages a teleconferencing system, a voice over IP system, and never even touches routers and switches. That's the other track. So you have this very specialized person, and I can see it now. When I, when I first saw them depart from this, I'm like, what are you doing? doing Cisco. Like I will go to my grave and tell everybody, even my grandmother, that they need to take CCENT before they die because they don't understand the world if they don't understand CCENT. But now I know what Cisco's doing. When I first got into teaching voice, I mean, it was 2002. And you know, my number one student was, they were the old, I shouldn't say old, they were the phone technicians. They were the, the people that had been working at MCI and Sprint climbing telephone poles for years and years with the butt set strapped to their uh, uh, hip. And I remember seeing them come into my class with this look in their eye like, what are you going to do to me? And boy, did I do all kinds of stuff. I'm like, and then subnetting, and then OSPF and replicating routes. And they're like, ah, because in reality, what are the technicians used to doing dealing with phones, right? Why do I need to know all of this other stuff? And finally, 15 years later, Cisco said, yeah, yeah, I, I think that's right. We can build a voice engineer, a collaboration engineer that doesn't have to learn all the other stuff and relegate some of that responsibility to all these other tracks, right? So statistically, yes, still nowadays, most people will pursue routing and switching first, but now we have this whole other path that you can follow that doesn't require you to be a master of all the IP fundamentals. It just allows you to focus on what you need to know to manage a collaboration system well. Okay, well, since there are no prerequisites for CICD, this could be one of the first experiences that you're having with CBT Nuggets, and I get an excuse to bring one of my favorite slides of all time into the series, how we do what we do at CBT Nuggets, because if you don't know, you're going to think we're crazy, <laughs> and we kind of are crazy, um, but first off, you got you to gotta start with the foundation. CBT Nuggets produces amazing training. They just do. They have a world-renowned reputation for producing some of the best training on the planet. Now, how do we do that? I would say it's it's almost all in this bottom statement right here. We have a dual purpose in our training. We go after knowledge, but also realizing that knowledge is everywhere. Have you heard of something called Google? <laughs> it's, you can, anybody can go to Google and figure out anything they want in their life if they spend enough time pouring over documents and reading uh, you know, white papers and write-ups and everything else. Knowledge for knowledge's sake is worthless and knowledge is often boring if you don't package it the right way with motivation or what I would call passion. Because you know what? IT is awesome. It's like putting together the ultimate jigsaw puzzle. <laughs> Actually, can I, this just popped in my head. Can I share with you something that, that happened to me literally four hours ago? Um, this morning, I was sitting uh, doing these recordings and poof, 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 banging on my door. Uh, it's my brother. <laughs> 
<laughs> Actually, hang on. Let me back up. I don't still live with my parents. Um, I created a company that does uh, what I'm about to teach you in this series, along with a whole bunch of other stuff, uh, setting up and deploying collaboration systems, network foundations. And one of the first people that I hired, of course, you're supposed to do it, and he's really good, is my brother. Um, and we're now up to 20-some employees, and it's going well. And he busted down my door, and he's like, dude, this is awesome. And he runs through the room. He's like, woo! He's like, I figured it out, figured it out. And I'm like, what did you figure out? And he's like, active directory replication. I know it's not, not a Cisco topic, but we had a customer that for all these years, literally years, have had problems with their active directory replication being slow. And he just figured out the magic bullet solution. And he's like, this is awesome. I've solved their problem. You know, so he's like, boom. And he's like, had to share, left. You know, and I'm like, that was awesome. That dude is on fire and he is going to conquer his day unlike <laughs> any other. He loves what he does and honestly, IT is one of those careers and I'm going to scare you as I as I say this. It's one of those careers that you can go home at night and open your laptop at seven o'clock and get lost in your job to where it's one in the morning and you're like, oh, oh, just, ooh, I'm in an outage window. I can reboot and nobody knows. You know, it's one of those things that it's just like, oh, there's nothing like it. So that's the foundation that we start from. If IT is awesome, why do you got to go off and make it boring? <laughs> why do you have to go off and, and, and suck the life out of it and say, oh, well, you know, memorize these dry figures of subnetting. You know what? Subnetting is cool because when you really get it, you're like, wow, I, I, that's like a giant jigsaw puzzle. I just put it together and I feel really good that I'm able to do that. Anyway. I could go on and on and on. Let me talk about how you can get the most from this series. Um, CICD, first off, uh, you got it. You got to build a lab. Can I tell you, um, building a lab will be one of the best things that you can do. And it's really cheap to do now versus is what it was 10 years ago when voice over IP was kind of cutting edge. Grab a couple phones, grab a couple 7960 IP phones, uh, grab a cheap switch. The beauty of 7960s is a lot of them support the old school inline power proprietary standards Cisco came up with. So you could go grab a, you know, a cheap 3550 inline power switch, which only power Cisco phones. But again, why would you buy anything but a Cisco phone? And then you can get, you know, and I'm, I'm right now, I'm still under $100 for a lab environment. You go on eBay and buy a uh, CUCM um, uh, virtualized pack, right? I used to go after the, the DVDs the where you can install CUCM and you can install uh, Cisco Unity Connection and that's the voicemail server. And you can install Cisco IM and Present Server. It's also called CUPS, CUPS Server and, uh, and Deploy. But you know what? You're talking about days of time of deployment and rebooting and virtualization. Nowadays, the people on eBay have gotten really smart and they sell uh, pre-virtualized packs that you can download in VMware uh, and, and do that. So add, so I'm, what, what am I at? I, you know, grab, I would say grab two times two Cisco IP phones at least. So, I mean, you can get them for 10 bucks, right? Um, so you have them in your environment. Uh, grab one 3550 switch. That's all you need. Uh, grab one 2621XM with a whole bunch of uh, memory. That's a, that's a voice gateway. Make sure it's got some FXS ports at a minimum. FXO would be a great bonus. These are your analog interfaces that let you connect old school devices like uh, modems or phones, and you can connect it to the PSTN on an FXO foreign exchange office Port, right so what am I at right here I've, I'm, I'm thinking okay maybe let's just say 50 bucks you know maybe you know 10 to 15 bucks a piece for these phones 3550 pff, 10 bucks you know plus I'm, I'm you got to throw some shipping in there and then I mean this the guy charges probably a pretty penny 75 bucks right look at that for probably under a couple hundred bucks, you've got a killer lab where you can do just about anything that you need for the CICD series and try it again, try it again, try it again. And literally, you're going after the fall in love factor. And so what I'm talking about is once you get the excitement of doing this and you see the phones ring, I mean, <laughs> okay, let's, let's be real. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sit down. You know. <sighs> let's be real. Uh, we could go at this and we could say, guys, You've got to uh, you've got to set up a phone system uh, for uh, for the company, and uh, you're, you're going to pass an exam on how to do it. You're going to put those phones on people's desk, and I mean, good grief, how dull can you make that sound? I mean, and I've got to admit, when I was there 15 years ago, when I first got into voice over IP. I was like, I'm not sure I really want to make phones ring. You know, uh, you, you phrase it in such a way that just sounds lame. Yeah, phones ringing really isn't that cool. But I'm telling you, once you start unpacking this thing and you see the capabilities that are there, 
it's going to be pretty awesome, and it's going to make you a hero with the company. So anyway, uh, build rent -a lab. Okay, so uh, second thing is obviously repeat, repeat, repeat. One of the benefits of having this on video is you can go through it again and again and again. Be active learners. Don't kick back on the couch and watch it on your laptop. Seriously, don't. Don't put it on a Roku. Don't put it on your TV. I know a lot of people are like, sweet, I can put it on my TV, and that's cool if you're being an active learner because you know what? If you watch something, I'm going to share with you a statistic that's going to demoralize you probably. If you just listen to something, in two months, you will remember 5% of what you heard. 5% of what you heard. It's because you're only using one modality, your ear, and you're in a vegetable kind of state, and you're going to forget most of what you heard, right? So we want to change that. And so the way that you do that is you start writing things down. You pause it and you go on Google and you do a little research on something that you didn't quite understand. You put together the lab environment. You, you set up the connections and go, oh, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do what I saw him do and see if I can do it myself and, and set up these phones and get them to, anyway, you know what I mean, right? That's how you never forget it. That's how you pass an exam. That's how you're successful in a real world. Last and not least is grab a book. Um, I would suggest this book right here. Now, I've got a subscription to Safari, so I'm getting it online, but you can grab it off of Amazon without a Safari subscription or anything like that. CCNA Collaboration uh, from Cisco Press. I actually used the flow of that book, kind of the, the series follows the flow of that book. So if you want a book that you can follow along with and go through, uh, this is the one. Uh, I want to show you something. I'm going to go to the acknowledgments. And, and I thank you much to Michael Valentines to say uh, thank you to Jeremy Chara for passing the torch. What, what does he mean? I actually wrote the previous edition of this book called CCNA Voice with uh, Michael. And you know what? Six kids later, <laughs> my wife said, Jeremy, you just don't have time to write another book. So uh, this, this one is near and dear to my heart. And actually, many of the sections in this were carried forward from the, uh, from the original CCNA voice. If you have a CCNA voice uh, uh, certification or you've been studying CCNA voice, the beauty is this. Almost all of the knowledge of CCNA voice passes over to CICD. They just add a little bit more at the end on unity connection and you know instant messaging and presence and really start hinting at the telepresence world. And this is one of the big differences between CCNA voice and CCNA collaboration is now they're moving in the direction, and this is you can feel the world moving this way, of video calls where it just happens. You pick up the phone and you have a teleconference meeting with a whole bunch of, of uh, people. And that's what the second part of CCNA collaboration is all about. CIVND is talking about how to set up the video collaboration systems. Whew, I got to cut myself off because I will just keep going and going and going. I am going to launch you into the CICD series. I am excited about this series and I am excited about you. I'm, I'm serious. It's one of those feelings. You ever get something really cool like a new iPhone or something? What do you want to do? You want to play with it and you're going to show somebody. You want to be like, oh, dude, check this, check this out. I can rotate the, you know, whatever. And that's kind of the feeling I have about this course. I'm like, oh, dude, you, you got to check this out. There is so much good stuff in this series. I know that you're going to enjoy this. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.